Hi guys, it's Miss Bostik, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what happened to Discord.py, why it got shut down, and what are the alternatives to Discord.py. And in the end, I'm gonna be talking about PyCord, which in my opinion is the best alternative. So let's begin. If you don't know, Discord.py has been shut down and it has been archived on GitHub, as you can see. That means that it will not be receiving any updates and it'll soon be outdated. So the creator of Discord.py, Danny, has written a gist about this and I recommend you to read this because it contains everything that you need to know about why Discord.py got shut down. The link will be in the description below. Now, one of the major reasons is that Discord were forcing its developers to use slash commands and they introduced the message content intent as well as verification, which Danny didn't like. So you can read about all of that in this gist. So what does this mean for you as a bot developer and what happens to your previous bots and everything? Well, it depends. If you have a private bot, that is, if your bot is in less than 75 servers, you can turn on the message content intent and you will be able to continue using Discord.py unless Discord introduces a breaking API change. And if your bot is in more than 75 servers, then you will need the intent, but Discord won't give you the intent if you just use it for command handling. That means you will need to rewrite your bot using slash commands by the end of April next year, so you still have some time for that. So let's talk about what options you have at the moment. So the first and the easiest option is to switch to a discord.py fork. So what is a fork? Well, a fork is when developers take the project, the source code of the project and continue working on it independently. So basically there are many forks of discord.py. You can actually see there are over 2,800 forks, but there are mainly three popular ones. There is PyCard, which is the most popular one at the moment. And I am one of the core developers of PyCard. There is Nextcord and there is Enhanced Discord.py. In my opinion, I think PyCord is the best alternative and I will tell you why I think this is the case a little bit later. But let's look at the other options. So the second option is you continue using Python, but you use a different API wrapper instead of Discord.py or its forks. And Hikari is one of the other wrappers that I would recommend. And all of the links will be in the description below so you can read about them and choose whichever one you want. And the third option and the hardest, if you just know Python, is to use a different language. That is, um, use a different wrapper in a different language. So for example, there's discord.js, which is a nice library as well, though I haven't really tried discord.js. There is also Serenity for Rust, and there are other wrappers as well. So as a third option, you can learn a new language, though this will be hard because you'll have to learn the language as well, and then the wrapper. So these are the three options that you have. Now you may be wondering about what will happen to my channel. Well, I'll continue making videos on PyCord, basically. And in the future, maybe Hikari, I might look into Hikari as well. Let's now talk about why I think PyCord is the best option. So why should you use PyCord over the other options and over the other forks? The first advantage applies to the first two options. That is, you don't need to learn another language. Uh, now, the second advantage is you don't need to learn a new library. This applies to all the forks of Discord.py and the environment will be almost the same. Like everything, the imports are mostly the same as well and um, the code that you have previously should be the same. There shouldn't be too many breaking changes with the forks as well. Now, the third advantage of PyCard compared to the other forks is it is the most popular on GitHub at the moment. It has over 250 stars. Now, I will talk about the other advantages a little later. I will first show you PyCard's alpha and um, what all features it already has. Now, you should join the PyCard server for updates and everything. The link will be in the description below. So as you can see, PyCard has released its public alpha and it includes slash commands and context menus, that is these application commands. And I will talk about these in a bit. And you can see that some things are not present yet in the alpha, that is cogs and checks and cooldowns. But these are being worked on at the moment. I have already implemented checks. Cogs are being tested at the moment. And these will soon be publicly available, hopefully in a week or so. Now the alpha is not available on PyPy yet. The version on PyPy is 1.7.3, which is the exact same as Discord.py. So we'll actually copy this. And you'll need Git for this. If you don't have Git installed, make sure you install it. So we'll go to our command line and we'll paste this. So this will install the public alpha for us. If you are watching this in the future, PyCord could already have released the 2.0 stable. So make sure you join the server and check the updates and make sure you get the latest version. Now to test the application commands, you'll actually need the scope for it. So I'll invite the bot that is my testing PyCord bot with application.commands and bot. I will give it administrator permissions. You can, however, choose any permissions that you'd like to give your bot. So I will invite my bot. Now, this isn't a tutorial on PyCord. This is basically showing you what all the alpha has. So I just have written a small snippet of code. So let me explain what this does. 
now you'll see that we import discord the imports are the same so you don't need to worry about changing your imports i have imported the token from a config file you don't need to worry about this too much i just run the bot with the token at the end here the first major difference you'll see is there's a discord.bot which is a new class i will talk about what discord.bot does and how it's different from commands.bot and what all changed internally about pycord in a bit first let me just show you how commands are written so we have bot.slash command now instead of writing at bot.slash command you can write at bot.command if you're using discord.bot however if you are using commands.bot you will need to write the entire thing because at bot.command will be for prefix commands if you're using commands.bot so we have async dev hello ctx and then await ctx dot send hello world this is basically a lot like your prefix commands except the ctx is now an interaction context which is a bit different from the context that you had before um, this has different methods and everything i will talk more about this when i create the tutorial you just see that this replies hello world and you can see there is another slash command named hi and you can see there are some parameters here there is a name which is a string there is an age which defaults to 18 and we send hello name you are age years old so let's run this and see if it works actually before i do that what i'll need to do is set a debug guild so i'll say debug guild and i'll need to copy the guild id so i will copy pycord's guild id now why do you need this well if you don't specify the debug guild this will actually register a global command and global commands take about an hour up to an hour to register and that won't be any good while you're testing so we have debug guild now instead of debug guild you can also pass in guild ids as a parameter to slash command and it is a list of ids that you want your slash command to work in so i will just remove this because i have the debug guild you'll see this in the pycord example so that's why i showed you this let's save this and let's run this now you'll see that there are no errors at the moment however if you do get a missing access error that means that your bot does not have the application command scope in that server so you might need to re-invite your bot with the command scope in that server so it turns out debug yield is not present in the alpha it is present in the development branch and this will be merged in soon so we can't actually do this at the moment what we'll have to do is use um, the guild ids parameter so we'll pass guild ids and i will copy this as well and let's run this again so the bot is ready now let's test the commands so we'll type hello and you'll see that we have this is our testing pi card hello and if we run this you'll see that we get hello world if we do hi you'll see that there is a name which is a required parameter and there is an optional parameter which is age so let's select the command for the name let's type swas for the age let's provide 16 and you'll see hello swas you are 16 years old and you can actually try and if we do name i say test and i leave the optional parameter you'll see that we get you are 18 years old and you can actually add descriptions to each of the parameters so you can say enter your name or enter your age but i'm not going to include that in this video because this is just a simple showcase you can look at the pycard examples folder and you'll see the examples let's now look at the context menus so in the context menus you can see that the setup is basically the same we have discord.bot and we are running the bot at the end and instead of slash commands we have user commands and message commands i have the guild ids as well and in the user command we just get the user that was selected and we have a simple slap command which says ctx.author.mention slaps user.mention and translate is the message command and this gets the message so we just have the message.content and then we say translate it into Japanese and then I have some Japanese here I haven't really translated it actually using some API you should be doing that but this is just a demo so I just have some Japanese here and let's uh, run this so I already have run this because some of you don't know these context menus so I go here and I will right click let's right click on myself and you can see this app section this is the application commands or like the context menus and you'll see that we have many options here and these are all registered by the bots so we have our slap command let's try it and you'll see that i slapped myself let's slap someone else let's slap the bot so we can do apps and then slap and you'll see that's was.py slaps testing pi card and let's try the message command as well so the three dots apps and then we have many options let's translate and you'll see that we got the message content and we got that it has been translated into Japanese. So that's it for the showcase. Let me now talk about discord.bot. But before that, you should know that all the forks of discord.py have buttons. You don't need to go around asking that because uh, discord.py 2.0 already had buttons. So we also have buttons. And I will make a tutorial on that soon. 
Anyway, let's now talk about Discord.bot. First, let's talk about the normal use case. Do I need to use Discord.bot? Not really. You only use Discord.bot if you just want slash commands and application commands. If you want your prefix commands to work as well, you can continue using commands.bot. You can still use normal message commands and application commands as well with commands.bot. And these are the decorators you'll need to use if you use the application commands, that is slash command, user command, and message command. Let's now talk about why we added discord.bot and why we couldn't just extend commands.bot to include slash commands and context menus. Just like the other folks have done, they have included them in commands.bot, but we haven't done that. The reason for that is commands is actually an extension to discord.py. You must have noticed that it is in discord.ext.commands. Commands is meant to handle normal message commands, the prefix commands, and slash commands and context menus are part of the API. So it does not make sense to include them in ext.commands. And that's why we have created a new class. Now, discord.bot inherits from client, just like commands.bot used to inherit from client before. Now, discord.bot inherits from client and commands.bot inherits from discord.bot, which means that everything that you have in discord.bot, that is the application commands, will be inherited by commands.bot and you can use that as well. Now, if you did take some time to read the gist that Danny wrote, you'll see that he also implemented slash commands at one point in time. And he did say that note, that my slash command implementation was completely different from the discord ext commands implementation since the two models are strictly incompatible so for me at least it does not make sense to add the slash commands into the commands extension and that is why i believe that pycor's implementation is better than most of the other forks and that's it for this video you are free to use any fork that you want you should try out all the forks and choose the one that you feel is the best that's all that i like to say and um, I'll always be promoting PyCord since I am a developer of PyCord. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll meet you next time. Goodbye.